Hi, I'm Daniel Butler. Welcome to another edition of America's Dumbest Criminals. On this episode of America's Dumbest Criminals. He took my marijuana plants. Your marijuana plants. Yes. <laughs> a goofy guard caught off guard. A silly squirrel nut speeder. You sped up to avoid hitting us. I don't want to hit it. A confused crook in Not Out of the Woods. A running robber in One Moment, Please. I suppose you're going to make some kind of federal case out of this. All this and more coming up on America's Dumbest Criminal. Here's your host, Daniel Butler. This next surveillance tape shows us a dumb criminal who couldn't have picked a worse time or place to display his lack of common sense. The last place you would expect crime would be at a convention for security companies. This particular booth was boldly advertising its variety of surveillance cameras and equipment available to catch criminals in the act. Everyone who walked by could plainly see that. Well, our insecurity guard for the convention decided to overlook the obvious and steal a tool right off one of the most watched booths in the building. Of course, he was caught on tape from a variety of angles and arrested within a matter of minutes, probably still wondering how in the world they were able to catch him. Duh. We weren't sure what category to put this next story in. Dumbest defenses? Without question. Wild kingdom? Probably. Call it a hybrid if you want, but one thing we can definitely call it is dumb. This traffic officer pulled a driver over for doing 42 in a 25 mile per hour zone, but the lead-footed woman had a bushy-tailed excuse. Okay, what's the problem? Well, I stopped you for speeding. You're speeding all the way down from uh, way up there to over here. Oh, yeah? You're doing about 45 and a 25. Oh, yeah. Well, you know why? No, I don't know why. There was a um, squirrel. Squirrel. And I had to hurry up. I thought I was going to hit it. Squirrel. Mm -hmm. The officer thought the squirrel story was just nuts and wrote the woman a ticket. Too bad. <laughs> officer Elizabeth Mann tells us the case of a dumb criminal who only got dumber. We had a, another burglary in progress where a municipal worker had passed by and seen this guy breaking into a house. So the police officer gets there, the crook's gone, but he left a vehicle in the driveway which was stolen. And when the officers looked in the vehicle, they found his driver's license. <laughs> For a year and a half, two years later, pretty recently, um, we one of our, our officers is driving around, spots a suspicious vehicle, and uh, tries to stop the vehicle. The vehicle evades him. Uh, four guys get out and start running. Well, after they wreck the car, four guys get out and start running. It's a stolen car. All four men in the car disperse, and everyone but the driver is caught so far. Well, lo and behold, he left his driver's license behind. Same guy. Same guy. When the winter weather nips at their noses, dumb criminals will do their darndest to come in from the cold, even if it means warming up to the heat. I believe this story will keep you frozen to your set. It was 10 degrees below zero in Cincinnati when this detective and his partner answered a call about two guys sticking up a gas station. They quickly nabbed one of the crooks, but the other one escaped into the woods. While his partner drove the prisoner back to the station, the detective followed in the bad guy's car. A few minutes into the trip, he pulled a U-turn and went back to the woods by the gas station. Playing a wild hunch, he blew his horn. Sure enough, out of the frosty night ran the other crook. Back up a little. All right, hold it right there. You know, to this day, the officer's partner doesn't believe that's how he caught the criminal, who will never be known as Mr. Freeze. Officers in Dallas, Texas, had set up a checkpoint to try and catch people who were driving without an operator's license. It wasn't unusual for cars to suddenly try to stop and turn around to avoid the check. Officers knew that meant there was a problem and then sent a car after them. On this particular day, they noticed a car see the checkpoint. 
then pulls suddenly off the road. However, the car didn't turn around. But the officers could see that the driver and passenger were frantically switching seats inside the car. Then the car proceeded to the checkpoint. At the checkpoint, the officers were surprised to find out that the new driver had no operator's license and was too drunk to walk. They immediately checked the original driver and found that he was in exactly the same condition. The officers had the men do one more switcheroo from their vehicle to the back of one of the waiting police cruisers nearby. Sort of a Chinese fire drill. <laughs> Hi, I'm Daniel Butler here with the bodacious bicarbonate Beaumont bacon. <laughs> Thank you. Sharing with you the foils, failures, fiascos, faux pas, and flops of the dumb crime world. It's not often, you know, that the target of a robbery aids in capturing the culprit. That doesn't happen very it's often. rare. A patrol officer in Concord, New Hampshire, was making his usual evening rounds when some pooper sleuthers alerted him to a disturbance at the back entrance of a local store. A lot of uh, stuff to come out Ooh. there. <laughs> the officer was there to greet the pet shop pillagers as they came out of the broken back door stockpiled with pet supplies and flea collars. Well, how much did those doggies in the window cost those little puppy poachers? About five to ten years. Yeah, five to ten. Yeah. Which is what this bundling bank robber got when he went in to hold up a New York City bank on a payday Friday. What he didn't realize was that government employees don't work for free, mm -hmm. and it just happened to be payday for the FBI, whose headquarters were located in the same building. What are the odds? When he asked the teller to hand over the money, he heard several guns start kind of cucking and clicking behind his head. Yeah, and a very large light bulb went <laughs> off over his head. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Very yeah. large indeed. TGI, the FBI. Yes, T-U-P-I-D. A spelling minor escaped from the Maryland House of Correction and went straight to his mother's house. When police arrived and asked for Bo Weevil, he replied, my name's not Bo Weevil, it's Bo Smith. The cops asked him to spell his last name. He couldn't. Well, can you spell A-D-C? A. Very good. D. 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 Excellent. Thank Very you. Very good. Bing, 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 bing. You win. And now let's take a look at our video of, of the week. week. You've heard the old saying, hold on to your wallet. Well, this guy held on to everyone's. A couple came downstairs late one night and surprised a prowler. He grabbed a purse off the kitchen table and ran out the door. The husband chased after him and reappeared a few minutes later with his wife's purse in hand. The thief had dropped the purse in his escape over the back fence. He had gotten the wallet out of the purse with all the woman's charge cards and driver's license and about $20 in cash. But what he failed to get was the $3,000 the woman had in cash in a secret zippered pocket. Dang him. If this man had been your average ordinary thief, he might have gotten away with it. Mm -hmm. But he was one of America's dumbest, dumbest criminals. criminals. Yep. You see, most purse snatchers will jettison the purse in the nearest trash can as soon as they snatch it. But this guy had kept every purse, every wallet, every piece of ID, and every credit card he had ever stolen. No. I'm not kidding. Each wallet represented 18 months in jail, and we understand that the police are still counting. <laughs> A teenager, still in the pre-graduate stage of his criminal career, stole a car with a few buddies and took it for a joyride. They left it in a field and made a clean getaway, or so they thought. One of these bozos had left his homework in the car. Indeed, the freshman must have been very surprised when the officer knocked on his door. Hi there, you Michael? Yeah. Michael, we got kind of some bad news for you here. I'm, I'm here to arrest you for not doing your homework. What do you mean not doing my homework? Well, you know, the homework that you left in the backseat of the car that you just stole. And I bet he got more than just a little after-school detention. But don't worry, we'll give him an A-plus for ignorance. If you're a dumb criminal, you should really consider taking your brain with you everywhere you go. Seriously, especially at the police station. It was a quiet day at the station when our light-headed loser stopped by to report an unusual theft. I'd like to report a theft. The officer tried his best to keep a straight face and let the kid know that if they did arrest his friend, that they would have to arrest him as well. After your roommate, we can also go after you for these marijuana plants. It is. I wasn't aware of that. You sure you want to do that? Um, Maybe I better reconsider. Maybe. Not surprisingly, the tattletailing toker decided to keep a lid on it, and charges were never filed.
<laughs> like, whoa. If the police department had a detector for criminals, like the National Weather Service has for its storm watches, there would be a dumb criminal alert going off 24 hours a day, and always when you'd least expect it. While stopped at an intersection one afternoon, an officer's car was hit from behind by another car. He called in and reported the incident to a state trooper and then prepared to go look at the damage. As he was about to get out of his car, a drunken man from the other car approached him and said, Hey buddy, there's no damage. It's okay. Just be on your way. He was so tanked that he didn't even notice that he had hit a police car until the uniformed officer got out of the car. To which our pickled pepper replied, I suppose you're going to make some kind of federal case out of this. The officer corrected him and said that it would only be a state case and booked him for DUI. While this guy's wife shouted sternly, I told you you were too drunk to drive. Oh, I'm sure she won't let him forget that for a good long time. No. In the movie Clueless, Alicia Silverstone's driving lessons don't include parking because, as she points out, everywhere you go has ballet. Well, of course, that's not true, but there are four clueless bank robbers from Richmond County, South Carolina, who probably wish it was. It seems that a quartet of criminals rolled into a small town to pull a bank job. Hoping not to draw attention to their car, they parked a few blocks away in a residential neighborhood and planned to steal a getaway car to get back. The heist went smoothly, and the robbers were ready to make a break for it, only they couldn't remember where they parked their own car. But this plan was a bigger clunker than the last Pauly Shore vehicle. And at least Pauly could find his vehicle. The criminals were arrested and convicted for bank robbery. Next time, maybe they'll stick up a bank that has valet. How clueless can you get? If you're a drunk criminal lost on the road, who are you going to call? How about drunk busters? One afternoon, the state police issued an all-points bulletin for a drunk driver that they had lost track of on the interstate. A local police officer was parked on a side street when all of a sudden a car pulled up. Hey, you? Hey, can you tell me? Excuse me? Uh, what street? Uh, run Possum, Possum Road. Possum Road? Yeah. Give me a second. Shut your engine off and I'll give you directions. Right. He got directions all right and all night lodging to boot. What a deal. An officer attended a police auction of cars seized in drug bust one afternoon. However, he soon found himself involved in a rather unusual bidding war with a very stubborn man. Bidding for the car appeared to be going well for the officer, except for one thing, the man next to him, who refused to be outbid. Eventually, he outbid everyone and rushed to fill out the paperwork. The officer thought something was up and watched as the crook wrote a check, and that's when it all came together. The name on the check matched the name of the previous owner of the car, a known criminal wanted for several arrests. He was buying back his own impounded car. The officer quickly impounded the crook and drove him down to the station in the officer's shiny new car. Fingerprints, thumbprints, lip prints. Yep, you heard right. This dumb criminal learned that puckering up can put you in the slammer. This is the story of a bungling bank bandit who gave the police department a big fat lip, which is exactly what they needed. The suspect in question had just held up a local bank in Las Vegas, Nevada. Then he turned to flee, but when the dork rushed out, he headed straight for the inn door and smacked right into the glass, leaving a big lip print behind. It was those luscious lip prints that prosecutors later used, along with the bank surveillance tape, as evidence to convict the puckered up perp. D is for distraction. That's what this Pensacola robber hoped to create in a daring bank heist. D is for detail, and he thought he'd covered them all. But as you can see through surveillance cameras, this dandy dude was just plain dumb. He managed to rob the bank and flee without incident. Part one seemed to work out his plan.
He quickly ducked into the restroom of a nearby restaurant where he had earlier hidden a change of clothes and presto changeo, a new look and a new identity. He was meticulous. In order not to be connected to any incriminating hairs or fibers, he set the old shirt ablaze. Delighted with his deception, our dandy failed to consider the consequences of his bathroom bonfire. De water from de sprinkler system. He panicked and slipped on the wet tile and broke his leg. When firefighters arrived at the scene, this is what they found. All there was left to do was deliver the dummy directly to the jail. The end. A well-dressed man went into a Fort Lauderdale bank with one transaction in mind, to rob it. Before doing so, he, A, gave the clerk his note. B, waited patiently for over 20 minutes while she called the police. C, politely took the money, then ran outside to the waiting arms of the law, or D, all of the above. We have a winner. <laughs> Folks, a dumb criminal is just like you or me. With one exception, we have a brain and aren't afraid to use it. We'll see you next week on America's Dumbest Criminals. The laughs just keep coming on the next episode of America's Dumbest Criminal. Golly gee, who's that? Frank Lee, blue shirt. A thwarted thief in Easy Off. A channeled chicken in Flew the Coop. Hell in a handbag gets hooked. A dunce is door jammed. All this and more on the next episode of America's Dumbest Criminals. The first one that came to mind was um, we had a, a residential burglar that you know was well known around this area. One day, uh, because we were trained as firefighters and police, I had a reporter with the Houston Chronicle writing with me to you know do a story on the PSO program. Well, I got a call about um, three juveniles sitting on a corner of a street. So I drive over there, and one is the burglar, and two other juveniles, an adult, 17 at the time. And I spoke to this burglar, and I found out that he had um, tube socks in his pants, which are what he puts on to hide his fingerprints. So I knew what he was going to do. It was obvious that they were sitting watching people leave their houses to find out who they were going to burglarize. And I told him, I said, you know, John Doe, I know what you're wearing. Don't do a burglary today, okay? Because you you go to jail. Oh man, I'm not gonna do a burglary. No, no, no. An hour later, we get a call of burglary in progress, same area. So here I am, my other reporter with me, and I'm driving down the street. And um, had a description. It was a description of the clothes he was wearing. And I was looking down these streets as I was driving to where the burglary was, and I see him just walking along. So I pull in, he doesn't try to run from me or anything. And, you know, I said, so-and-so, put your hands on the car. Oh, what's up, you know? I just put him in the back of my car. I drove him around to where my complainant was and I had her look out her window and she said, you know, that was him. So I got him out of the patrol car and by then another officer was over there. And uh, we started to pat him down and he had a watch in his pocket that he did not have earlier. You know, it was a woman's watch and uh, some other stuff. So I pulled out the back seat of my car and there was a pile of jewelry where he had taken it out and dumped it. So I got a, a burglary conviction on him and he went to the penitentiary. So that was a good case.